All right, so in my last video, I got a lot of criticism saying that my uh, Earth, Moon, Sunlight thing wasn't to scale. My little setup was not to scale. And, uh, well, that's a very good observation, everyone, you know, that's, you know, I applaud you. I did say in the video that it wasn't to scale, and you also pointed out that it wasn't to scale. So give yourself a, a brownie point or gold star or whatever you millennials think you deserve. And uh, so what we're going to do is, uh, well, I, I'm going to address this whole scale thing because apparently people just don't appreciate the fact that even though NASA doesn't do their videos to scale, everyone thinks that I need to. So fine, I will. You asked for it, here it comes. Uh, so in this last video, what I had was the globe, which is 12 inches wide, and I put the moon, which is pretty much only like an inch wide in my video, that little bouncy ball there on the stick. And uh, it was very close to the earth. It was not to scale, like I said. And uh, everyone got really uptight and they said, this has to be to scale. And, and I think the idea is, if I understand you guys correctly, if I do it to scale, then all of a sudden the shadow of the moon will fly past the earth and, uh, you know, then it'll be like the moon's shadow should go from west to east. I think that's what people say, are saying, is that if it's to scale, then the eclipse will make sense on the globe model. And what I got instead of other people showing me to scale, because I said, you know, if you, hey, if you want it to scale, first of all, go complain to NASA. Second of all, make one yourself. Uh, I didn't see anyone make a scale model like I've been doing. Uh, what, what I saw instead were some cartoons, some really funny math, uh, a lot of people showing kind of like these little animations of maybe what they think should be going on and you know anyway well basically yeah this this old video got a lot of critique and I, I decided fine if we're gonna do this to scale then I'm gonna have to get my calculator out and do some math and so um, yeah here we go you're gonna you're gonna see the, uh, the scaled down model is you know me calculating how I got to where I got to and then uh, then you're actually gonna see the uh, the scale model of the eclipse itself so I hope you enjoy The Earth is 12,742 kilometers wide. The Moon is 3,474 kilometers wide. Earth to the Moon is 384,400 kilometers, which is about 30 Earths away. Earth to the Sun is 149,668,992 kilometers away. Uh, and that's about 389 Earth to Moons. That's rounded down slightly. If you actually do the math, it's 389.3574, blah, blah, blah. So the moon is about 27% the size of the Earth. So if my globe is 12 inches, then the moon is 3.24 inches. And therefore, the gap between the Earth and the moon would be 30 feet. How far would the sun be? Well, the Earth to the sun on this scale would be 30 feet times 389 Earth to moons, which is 11,670 feet away. That's my first distance from the Earth to the sun on this scale. That's 2.2 miles. The diameter of the light source would have to be... Well, the sun's diameter in real life is uh, allegedly 1,391,400 kilometers. If I divide that by Earth to moons, which is 384,400 kilometers, I get a ratio of 3.62 Earth to moons is the sun's diameter. So if the Earth, is t which is 12 inches, to the moon, which is 3.24 inches, is 30 feet, then the sun should be 30 feet times 3.62, which is 108.6 feet wide at a distance of 11,670 feet. Uh, so I don't have 30 feet to work with um, so that the moon and the earth are to scale, let alone uh, so that the sun can be to scale so that the sun shines on the 30 foot gap from uh, that far away, from 2.2 miles. That's crazy. The real sun is at an awkwardly high angle right now, so I can't do it outside either using the real sun. Plus, I don't think that would technically be to scale. So if you think about it, like 2.2 miles, 3.54 kilometers, I literally cannot film that. I don't have lights strong enough to film that far. Uh, so I'll divide everything by 4 to scale it down by 1 quarter. The 12 inch earth becomes 3 inches, the 3.24 inch moon becomes 0.81 inches, and 30 feet between the two becomes 7.5 feet. 2.2 miles divided by 4 is 0.55 miles. So let's check some math here. So earth to the sun is about 389 earth to moons, therefore if earth to the moon is 7.5 feet then the light source should be 389 times 7.5 which is 2,917.5 feet away. It's more accurately 2,920 feet because if you use the, th that's if you use the 389.3574, you know if you use the full decimal. Anyway, 2,920 feet is 0.553 miles which is basically what we have up here. Other, in other words, it's uh, 0.8899 kilometers or 890 meters away. So if the Earth being 3 inches, 
to the moon being 0.81 inches is 7.5 feet, then the sun should be 7.5 feet times 3.62, which is 27.15 feet wide at a distance of 2,917.5 feet. Remember the sun's diameter is 3.62 earth to moons times 7.5 feet, which is you know from the earth to the moon on this new scale. So checking my math, the last distance from the earth to the sun, 108.6 feet divided by four is 27.15 feet, which is what I got here. Oh, sorry, that's not distance, that's width. Come on, camera, what are you doing? All right, so the Earth and the Moon become more manageable at this scale, the Earth being 3 inches wide and the Moon being 0.81 inches wide. And I've actually got those cut out here. I've got a 3-inch wide Earth there with a very small Moon. Can't even hold on to it, it's so small. Um, the problem is the Sun would still need to be 27.15 feet wide at over half a mile away. I don't have a light source that big or powerful, nor a space convenient enough to set up this model. If I really want to scale everything down for you guys, I could divide everything by 10. Uh, so the Earth would be 0.3 inches, not very big. The Moon would be 0.081 inches. Uh, and the light source would be 2.715 feet wide instead of 27.15 feet wide at 88.99 meters away, or 89 meters. So remember I just uh, took that 890 meters divided by 10 would give me the 89 meters. So that's 291.96 feet away. So the Earth and the Moon would be 0.75 feet away and that's only 9 inches. So to test for consistency, my first uh, distance of 11,670 feet divided by a diameter of 108.6 feet is 107.4585. The second distance would be 2,920 feet divided by a diameter of 27.15 feet is 107.5506 and 291.96 feet for distance divided by 2.715 feet for diameter is 107.5359. So it's very closely scaled. Um, so 89 meters isn't so bad either, but I wonder if my flashlight can make it that far. In order to measure out the sizes for this model, uh, I would go 9.6 30 seconds, just going by what, what the divisions are on my tape measure. 9.6 30 seconds is 0.3 inches, so that's the Earth exactly. 2.6 30 seconds would be 0.08125, which is basically the size of the Moon. It's tiny in this scale. And they would only need to be, like I said, 0.75 feet away, or 9 inches. The sun would be 88.99 meters away, and I could try filming, but like I said, the, the light might not make it, and the, the camera might not pick up the light either. So the sun at this scale, would all, it would have to be 2.715 feet wide. My light source isn't going to be that wide, but my flashlight does have quite a bit of throw and flood, so it could potentially work. So that's kind of it. I've broken this down as best I can so that I've taken the scale of a foot-wide globe and a 3-inch moon down to 0.3-inch globe at a 0.081 inch moon and so the the sun would have to be 88.99 meters away you know what what the heck it's uh it's the day before the eclipse i might as well do this and get it done you know before it actually happens so we're actually going to go set up this scale model and what i've got here is well if I draw it out, I've got a circle that's 0.3 inches wide. I'm just going to keep it on a sheet of paper so that it's easier to hold because, let me show you, it's actually tiny. I don't want to actually hold that with my fingers. And the moon is going to be, actually I'll hold that there so you can still see it. The moon is going to be that tiny little guy right there uh, in the stuck in the tape. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold these guys 9 inches apart so that it's to scale. And I'm going to hold... I'm going to set up my flashlight so that it's 89 meters away. I'm going to pace out 89 meters. That's not exact, but you know what? I'm thinking it's good enough at this point. I'm not going to measure out 89 meters. I'm going to step, you know, 89 big paces, uh, and that's going to be approximate. It'll be close enough. And at that point, we should be able to see if there is any parallax from the moon to its shadow on the Earth. All right, so I will, uh, I'll see you in the next part of the video. Okay, you guys, this is it. It's, uh, let's see, it's about 11.30 at night, and my camera has a really crappy night record mode, but you guys wanted scale, so if you're watching this, you've seen the math. I've got my flashlight set up here at about 90 yards, 90 paces. 
uh, from my earth. So I'm going to start walking toward my model earth and uh, tonight we're going to see the earth and the moon to scale uh, in front of a flashlight and we're going to see if it, uh, if it still works on the globe or not. I'm going to turn around and you'll be able to see the flashlight way back there. Now it's, it's super bright, I can see where I'm going, but it's just a matter of whether the camera will be able to pick up the, uh, the earth down here 90 yards away, 90 meters away. So the earth is going to be um, 0.3 inches in diameter at this scale, and the moon is going to be a speck. It's going to be 0.081 inches. And uh, as I'm approaching, oh shoot, I'm not sure I'll be able to see it. Oh, there it is. Okay. So we're sneaking up on the earth here. Let me just see. Can we get it? Oh, I can't believe this works. It's just super laggy because it has to, has to open up for so long. Well, that little circle underneath the magnet, the black thing's a magnet, that little circle there, that's the earth. It's really hard to, uh, yeah, you can see it's got a three in there, three inches, or point three inches, sorry. And even harder to see will be my little moon on a stick. All right, there's, there's the stick, and with the piece of tape on the right there, you'll see the little blotch is point oh, uh, point oh eight one, I think it was, point oh eight one inches in diameter. And this is going to be tough to do. You'll have to take my word for it. I'm, I'm going to hold this, uh, the moon out about... Let's see, um, let's see, can I get it both in there? Oh, uh, you can't really see, oh, there it is. You see that shiny stuff there? That's the tape floating out in the blackness. And what I'm gonna try and do is show you that when I move my stick with the moon on it, there, you can see it. That shadow is showing up on the piece of paper where the earth is. And when I, this is about, well, yeah, I'd call that about nine inches away. When I move the stick an inch or so, it moves the exact same way on the piece of paper. And what that should be demonstrating to you is that there's no shadow parallax. The sun, if I'm going to turn around here slowly and show you, the sun being 93 million miles away, or on this scale, about 88.5 meters away, with the Earth being 0.3 inches wide, and with the Moon being, might as well just be the tip of this uh, little stick here, with the Earth being 0.3 inches wide, and with the Moon being 0 .01, 0 0.081 inches wide, and those two being 9 inches away from each other, as I move the Moon back and forth, it's really laggy, but you can see it moving. Every little bit that I move the stick, the shadow moves as well. It doesn't move any more, doesn't move any less, and that's because uh, there's just no room for parallax. The light source is so far away, it's like having the stick right up to the paper. If I move it a little bit, the shadow moves the same amount. If I move it back, there's no parallax. The stick will move the same amount as the shadow. And so what that should tell you is that as the Earth is rotating, and this eclipse happens on the 21st. Um, the Earth is rotating in such a way that even though the, the Moon is going to be moving from west to east in its orbit around the Earth, the little bit of time where the eclipse occurs, the Moon may move west to east, but the Earth is going to rotate fast enough, like it always is apparently, so that the Moon appears to go from east to west. And because the shadow here to scale moves at the same pace, at the same rate that the actual moon representation does, that disproves the Copernican solar system. Because in order for the shadow of the eclipse to move west to east, which it's going to do, there has to be way more shadow parallax, and that's only possible on NASA's really badly scaled images of the eclipse, where the sun is very close and uh, 
you know what, while we're at it, how about we put this away? I'm actually going to bring this uh, setup over to my flashlight and then I'll show you what an off-scale image of this eclipse would look like. So we're walking back to the torch. Man, that's bright. Almost there. Actually, at this point, I can probably turn the night mode off and go back to regular filming, and then it won't be so laggy. So I'm going to do that. Okay, guys, here we are. We're back at the uh, back at the flashlight with my little Earth there, 0.3 inches. There we go. Get the moon out here. You can see the shadow. And this is off scale, just like NASA. So I've got my moon. Maybe you can see that better now, actually. That little piece of paper in there. Oh, I had it. That's the moon to scale, taped inside. Well, stuck inside some tape on this little stick. A little shish kebab moon. So we've got 0.3 inches for the Earth. The moon is off scale. I could even bring it closer if you want. The point is, just like in the fake off scale videos that NASA and that mainstream science will give you, they'll have the light source really close to the moon. And that way, just to kind of show you exaggeration, if I put it right up close, can you see the shadow there? I'm barely moving the moon at all. And that shadow is whizzing across the paper. I'm just going like that. I'm just wiggling it. And the shadow is going like half a foot. No problem. So that's what everyone expects to happen in this eclipse. They, they think that if the moon, if everything's to scale, you know, according to my other video, which was off scale, they say, no, the moon is right on top of the earth. That's wrong. So they wanted the moon to back up, be closer to my flashlight. Well, in NASA's off-scale version, like what I'm modeling here, indeed, potentially, if the moon is barely, you know, if the moon's making its orbit around the Earth going west to east, you know, going in between the sun and the, like, that would pretty much be it, going in between uh, the beam of light from the sun to the Earth. Not that the beam just has a little path like this, but um, as it makes its way through, Where's the shadow? There we go. It'd be really fast. So that, But that's off scale, you guys. I just showed you that to scale, the shadow of the moon would travel the same speed on the surface of the Earth as the moon would appear to travel across the sky, as seen from the surface of the Earth, okay? The moon and its shadow, uh, they act as one unit, as if, as if the moon were actually on the end of a stick and the shadow were to hit the paper here, and the moon were to move with the shadow like that. That's what it should be on the solar system if it were to scale. But it's not. The shadow of the moon is going to go from west to east in the eclipse. So anyway, that pretty much settles that. Um, if you still think that the Earth is a ball after this, and you think that the eclipse is going to prove that the Earth is a ball, and that the sun's a ball, and that the universe is made of balls, you know, I don't know, you just, you have some sort of ball obsession. You need to let go of your balls. Get those balls out of there. If the Earth is flat, it's that simple. All right, I'm out. Thanks for watching.